came out, uh, played very well, uh, had a strong first half. Uh, Holden Xavier to uh, 36 percent from the field, out rebounded them by two. Uh, we kept Christian <coughs> um, and Stainbrook and check. You know, I think they combined for eight points. They, they had four points each. Um, so I was, I was really, even with the foul trouble that Orlando was in, um, which, which affected us, I was pleased uh, with the strong uh, first half. And then the second half um, was really a tale of two halves. Second half, uh, Xavier dominated, uh, kind of took control of the game in the, in the first five minutes of that second half. We made some runs and hung around, uh, but the end didn't have enough to get over the top, get over the hump. Um, and as a result, had the loss. And the numbers bear it out. Second half, they shot 56%, which I think is the most any team shot against us this year in a half. So they shot uh, 56 in the second half. They were plus nine on the boards. So we went from a plus two to negative seven for the game uh, because they out us by nine in the second half. We, uh, we you know, three-point shooting didn't hurt us. Um, and so really, it was a tale of two halves. Thought, our, thought we played really well in the first half and, and uh, we're not pleased with our performance in the second half. And in this league, you got to play two halves. You got to sustain it. Uh, if you're sustain your level of effort and execution, if you're going to give yourselves a chance to win, because it's such a, a strong conference. We knew we our, our focus was getting back in their you know initial uh, transition. You know their primary break where they've been effective this year at throwing the ball ahead to Christian. He turns that corner as well as anybody in the country. Accelerates and gets to the rim and gets himself to the foul line as a result and puts a lot of you know, pressure on opponents just because of that ability, a sideline break. And uh, he goes pedal the metal fast and furious and gets to the rim as well as anybody. Um, so that was our first focus was getting back defensively, which I thought we did really well, obviously holding them scoreless for eight minutes. Um, and then our second goal was to front and back uh, the bigs in the post, and in particular, you know, uh, Stainbrook, kind of the Billy Paltz reincarnated. Um, the whopper, um, hard not to appreciate uh, appreciate his his game. Watching a lot of game, well, you know, having watched film um, from a coaching perspective, you know, he can't help but appreciate his kind of old school approach uh, to basketball. So we were able to to front and back uh, on the post, and then we held our own plus two on the boards, which is the the other big focus because uh, they're so effective at getting second and third shots. And uh, we did that well in the first half. And, and then in the second half, um, as D'Angelo alluded to, you know, uh, a combination of some things we didn't do well defensively, but then you always have to tip your hat to the opponent because they're also trying to beat you. And they have good players, and they're on their home court. And some players stepped up, which is what has to happen when a team is, is putting heavy heat on uh, some of your primary scores. It's going to open up you know, your third, fourth, and fifth options on the floor. And if those players step up and make plays, you know, then you're into a cat and mouse, kind of that chess match element, pick your poison, so to speak. And um, so, you know, that's a credit to uh, to uh, Xavier, you know, as a collectively as a group. Uh, they, they made enough shots and got enough stops and controlled uh, the second half. And as a result, uh, they're one and oh, and we go home all in one. Yeah. The three. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. 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 Well, the sec, the sec, the the first one was the one that that was actually he's supposed to come off that screen. There were really a sequence of three plays. There was another one too where I wanted him to drive off of Orlando, and he was he wasn't instead of taking it aggressively off of Orlando and if then there's good help then you throw back to him for the three which is great kind of like a you know, a screen and pop Euro style. But he was coming off kind of soft and looking just to play catch with him. Then he got it again and kind of came off soft and threw it to him. So, again, that's just him learning that he's going to be able to throw those darts to three-point shooters by coming off with a head of steam, putting pressure on the defense, getting them to collapse, get two to guard one, and now you uh, kick the ball. And it's like an option quarterback. There's reads because if they don't help off of those three-point shooters, that's where he's able to get inside and either draw the foul or score the basket. And he's probably as 
a good a player as I've had in my career at drawing fouls, other than maybe Chris Johnson, kid, Marcus Johnson's son that played for me at UCLA, different positions. But both of these, both of them have this knack uh, for getting themselves to the foul line. And uh, he, Rashid does it consistently. Sometimes you see that more from a, from a post player that gets fouled. It's, it's a little more unusual to see it, the frequency of, of free throws. And, and it was against Syracuse, he did the same thing he did here today. So, but within that, there's always room for improvement on the reads. And uh, the three-pointer, that was where we flattened the, we basically flattened. We were trying to, you know, Xavier does a nice job of covering the boxes and elbows. They keep their defense kind of tight, like eight in a box in football. It's 